Hello and welcome to this week's Out of Cast, your program completely in English to improve your knowledge about cinema. Today, I'm your host, Helio the Bluehead, with my friend and colleague, Twinkle Nora. And we'll continue our discussion about the musicals. And there are many awesome movies left to talk about. But before heading to discuss about these amazing movies, let us inform you about our socials where you can find us. On our Facebook page as Roma Tree Radio, on our Twitter account as Roma Tree Radio, and guess what? On Instagram as Roma <laughs> Tree Radio. And of course, as always, you can listen to us through a streaming website as radio.unibromatree.ed and on the Lunar app as Roma Tree Radio, and you can listen to our podcast every exactly. Sunday on SoundCloud. We are so professional. Yeah, on SoundCloud and also on the website. So don't forget about that. Get yourself a cup of tea, and we'll be back to you very soon. Now let's jump to 1964. Uh, with Mary Poppins. So many of you may not know that Mary Poppins has never been a Disney original production at all. We may have changed lots of stuff, but it's actually based on another series written by Pamela Lange and Travers. So this movie was directed by Robert Stevenson, based on a screenplay by Will Walsh and Don the Grady, and it's now the first installment of a Disney trilogy, along with Seven Mr. Banks and Mary Poppins Return. The plot. Well, you probably already know it, but we're going to say it anyway. In Edwardian London, a magical man who employs music and adventure to help tuning let the children become closer to their father. Starring an amazing and magical performance by Julie Andrews, who plays as Mary Poppins, Dean Van Dyke, who plays as Bert, and David Tomlinson, who plays as George Banks, Karen Dorice, who plays as Jane, and finally Matthew Gabber, who plays as Michael. Of course, Julie Andrews got an Oscar and the Golden Globe for Best Actress. The movie won an impressive number of prizes among which an Oscar for Best Film Editing, Best Visual Effects, Best Original Score, two Grammy Awards, a, a WGA Award for Best Written Musical, and it officially entered the National Film Registry in 2013. It is by far one of the few movies that achieved 100% in Rotten Tomatoes, which is That's really... That's impressive. Yeah. Um, unsurprisingly, it's not just a critical acclaimed piece of art, it also beca uh, become very profitable for good old Walt Disney. Here comes the money. the money! Since it managed to get $103 million uh, out of a budget of $6 million, I mean, we're talking about the 60s, so those are really, 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 really big numbers back then. What else is there to say except for... Super Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious! <laughs> You nailed it. I know it by memory, honestly. Now, let's jump right in to 1978 with Grease. Not only it's one of the most loved musicals, but Grease is also regarded as one of the best movies ever. Set in the United States during the 50s, it sees two youngsters stumbling upon each other in school, having spent a summer of love together. Danny Zuko, played by a very youngy John, yeah. Travol youngie, <laughs> youngie <laughs> youngie John Travolta, is the leader of the Greaser gang Thunderbirds, while Sandy Olsen, as Olivia Newton John, is a young Navy girl from Australia. The movie focuses on the misunderstandings and school reputation to wreck, but in the end, they both realize they're meant to be and live happily ever after. Ooh, Ooh, love like songs, love birds, chirp, 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 chirp. <laughs> It is a simple, yes, plot. It is a plot, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But it's not what made this movie so famous. Basically, Grease is a 1950s teenage musical. Now, it's thanks to the glam look, the Grease subculture, and of course, the songs. They are so catchy that people still love them today. You tell may. Me more, tell me more, <laughs> tell me more. I'm sorry. Yeah, you may know Summer Nights, even without having watched the movie itself. When it came out, Grease was a very huge uh, box office success, grossing a worldwide total of 396 million, breaking the world, uh, the record previously he uh, held by Sound of Music. Critics praised the movie, receiving mostly positive reviews, considering, ooh, considering the movie a Take master a class in musicals, thanks to its teenage. Fan, um, 50s fantasy. 
The film holds a 75% approval rating uh, uh, under uh, review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes based on 71 reviews with an av uh, average rating of uh, 6.7 out of 10. The website's critical consensus reads, Gris is a pleasing, energetic musical with in, uh, infectiously catchy songs and an old to young love that never gets old. Now, let's talk about something beautiful very it, it it's it's like coming out of it's a play it's like a play yep yeah we want to talk about moulin rouge that came out in 2001 so starring nicole kidman as satin and edward mcgregor as christian the movie is directed by baz lerman 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 I, he is australian i know it's so weird Anyway, in general, there have been four movies called Moulin Rouge, the first one being in Silent Era in the 1928, then another one in 1952, followed by another one being made in 1956 about the life painter Toulouse Lautrec. Now, two interesting facts for you! The first one, the Moulin Rouge means red windmill, and, well, as many of you might know, it sees a famous cabaret in Paris, and the later 80s, 100s, 1800s, 100s, there, have, there really was a windmill. Now, the second fact for you, Buzz Lerman uh, used Toulouse Lautrec as an important character in his movie. Now, here's the plot. What's the plot? Uh, <laughs> it's 1900, and Christian, a young English writer, um, has come to Paris, Paris, <laughs> we might say. He then falls in love with an actress called Satine, uh, the leading lady of the famous nightclub de Moulin Rouge. Um, love, romance, and tragedy have never been more eccentric. Believe us, it's really beautiful. Um, with musical numbers and moments not grounded in reality, literally. This jukebox musical romantic drama is filled with amazing choreography, dance, and musical numbers, really sang by McGregor and Kidman. Their voice is great, let me tell you. Shakespeare's love of uh, theater is shown in this tale of music and love. And uh, interestingly enough, Moulin Rouge is the third installment of Baz Larman's trilogy called the Red Curtain Trilogy. The first one being Strictly Ballroom from 1992 and then Romeo Juliet from 1996. And yeah, that one with LDC and yeah, I'm gonna call him like that because Brad Pitt also calls him and also stars Claire Danes. Now, Moulin Rouge got many positive reactions both by critics and audience scoring 76% on Rotten Tomatoes gaining uh, 179.2 million dollars at worldwide box office got nominated in eight ca categories including best picture and best actress for Kidman and eventually won two for best costume design and best art direction. Okay, now in 2006 came this beautiful mesmerizing musical called Dreamgirls. Written and directed by Bill Condon, this movie is based on the 1981 Broadway musical of the same name by composer Henry Kieger and lyricist libertist Tom Hayden. Dreamgirl is a film a cliff, meaning it is a film describing real life behind a facade of fiction. Uh, wait, facade. facade. <laughs> oh man, I've read this 100 times and it's still getting right. Oh, alright, so I was trying to say a work of fiction taking strong inspiration from the history of the Mountain record label and one of its acts of the Supremes. The story follows the history and evolution of American R E no. R and B. No, American R and B music. R and B yeah. music. During the 1960s and the 1970s, through the eyes of a Detroit, Michigan, a girl group known as the Dreams and their manipulative record executive. And, obviously, about all the drama that's going on behind the curtains, this movie, well, talking and thinking about the cast, it has an all-star one, Beyoncé Knowles, uh, Jennifer Hudson, Jamie Foxx, Hattie Murphy, and Danny Glover. Now, okay, so by, by now you gotta be interested and invested and convinced to watch this movie already. I mean, every movie that has Eddie Murphy in it is worth it. Even Shrek 4 is worth it because it has Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Ooh, 
I mean, seriously, they are all at the top of their, their game. Gundam at first intended to cast relatively unknown actresses for the girl group, but Beyonce lobbied uh, for the part of Dina Jones and was cast after a successful screen test. Then for one of the most important roles, Effie White, the emotional center of the movie, Condon again insisted on casting an unknown actress. A total of 783 singing actresses auditioned for the role and eventually Jennifer Hudson won that role and it was uh, it, making it her debut film performance. The response, either box office wise or critic wise, to this movie was generally positive, granting 78% on Rotten Tomatoes and gaining $154.8 million at worldwide box office. The best reactions, though, were mostly about Jennifer Hudson's performance, television hosting, even television host Ooh. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah? Yeah. Really? Saw the film during one of the press screenings. She phoned Hudson on the Oprah episode airing the next day uh -huh. praising her performance as a religious experience and a transcendent performance the movie won two academy awards best sound mixing and best supporting actress for jennifer hudson imagine you're playing a role and it's your first movie performance you have this huge important role and you also win an oscar for that that's a huge confident boost how lucky you must be! Not ignoring the fact that Hudson is... She is very talented. We're yeah. not ignoring that. We already know that. But, I mean, it, you gotta be so lucky. I mean, I, I just can't imagine it. Like a yada. Fuck you! <laughs> fuck you, you fucking fuck! I was trying to express myself. <laughs> I censor your ass, man. Oh, oh shit. Right. Okay. The light of my cell phone just fell off. Okay. Wait. Okay. Sapete che Giulio è moige adesso. Ciao, bambini. Yeah, Giulio is directing today. What an honor. Yep. A big honor. Whoa. Okay, so I almost killed myself. <laughs> all right, you Your have, chairs are you really have no tricky. idea what's going on in this studio. We are all a bunch of crazies, uh, all together and making this group called Out of Cast. <laughs> yeah, anyway, bunch of crazy cinema scholars. <laughs> okay, now cast Hugh Jackman in any movie, and I'm sold. I'm dead serious about this. This guy is amazing. She's that serious, I know. Yeah, he is because he is amazing. He's so talented. He has a great singing voice. So, like we said before, he was cast in Phantom of the Opera, but due to some conflicts, he couldn't play the role, so he got another huge role in another huge musical. Hear the people sing, singing, singing the song, song of Angry, angry Man. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Now we're going to talk about Les Miserables that came out in 2012. Directed by Tom Hopper and scripted by William Nicholson, Alan Bublé. <laughs> Did I get Bublé. it right this time? Bublé. Bublé. I guess. <laughs> who wrote original French lyrics? Claude Michel Schoenberg. Schoenberg. <laughs> Damn it, I've been trying this two times and no, I can't, seriously can't. I'm sorry, Claude Michel Schoenberg. Schoenberg. I'm sorry. Every I'm, 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 I'm gonna say a, a, a huge... sorry, sorry later. later we have later. a huge problem with surnames. I don't know why. That's why I'm not saying my uh, my surname as well. It's I know it's tough for everyone. Nah, it's not. It is. That's why I'm always Helio the Boohead for everyone. Just Helio. That's it. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, Herbert Kretzmer. Yeah? I get it right. Nail it. Nail it. <laughs> Overall, the um, English lyrics, it is based, of course, on the 1862 French novel of the same name by Victor Hugo, who also inspired a 1980 musical by Boublib and Schoenberg. <laughs> yeah, nail it. Okay. <laughs> it looks for me. 
And so the story is set in France during the early years of the 19th century. We follow Jean Valjean, played by Jackman, uh, who, while being hunted for decades by the ruthless policeman Javert, played by Russell Crowe, after breaking parole, agrees to care for a factory worker's daughter, Fantine. Cosette. Uh, Fantine is my mother, played by Anne Hathaway, and yes. the daughter is Cosette, played by Amand Fassa Seyfried. Amanda Seyfried, <laughs> and, he, and she uh, plays the role of Cosette in... in, in precious Cosette, the best oh, baby okay. ever. I stand one queen. Oh, really? <laughs> Didn't know that. And so the story reaches a resolution against the background of the June Rebellion of the Paris Uprising in 1832. Now, one of the most interesting things that this movie has achieved, of course, by the director's choice, uh, was that the film's vocals were recorded live on set using live piano accompaniments uh, played through earpieces as a guide with the orchestral accompaniment Uh, recorded in post-production rather than the traditional method where the film's musical soundtracks are usually uh, pre-recorded and played back on the set which um, actors lip-sync. Of course, that doesn't mean it worked very well for all of the actors uh, on set. one actor in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Who might be? Hmm. No, 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 no. It's no, not, no. not here, not now. Uh, <laughs> and said, and surely you have to sacrifice some stuff to get to this level of technical achievement. It's a tough challenge. You gotta act, move, sing, and nail each singing note. Unfortunately, almost everyone, I mean, we're saying almost, almost. everyone nailed both acting and singing on the set, except for, you guess it, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe. Not that he's a bad actor or anything at all, he's good, but we gotta say he was just miscast and he cannot sing. Interestingly, Paul Bettany was meant to be cast as Javert. Uh, imagine Vision from MCU sings. Lows, <laughs> big lows. But at this point, I think anyone would be better than Crow. So Even sorry. Hell yeah. No, I'm not good at singing. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm Javert. No, 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 no. Uh, but hey. Uh, the movie was mostly praised by the critics, having 69% on Rotten Tomatoes, getting nominated for eight Oscars, winning three Best Makeup, Hairstyle, uh, and Hairstyle, Best Sound Mixing, and Best Supporting Actress for Anne Hathaway. Oh, do we did five minutes? <laughs> Let's talk about a movie that came in 2016 and people went mad about it. They will say they were, yeah, they were saying It's that. Best Yeah. No, they were saying that this is the best musical, it will be a classic, and Julio is doing some faces over there. <laughs> ah, it's your favorite movie, isn't it? Uh, people no. gonna, people oh. gonna probably terrorize us after we're... I mean, we're not trash talking, it's a good movie, and it has a, a very high Rotten Tomatoes score. Yeah. But... Ba -ba -da -bam, I'm against it. I'm not a fan of this movie. Ooh, she said it. I said it. Oh no. Because if you, because look, if you want if you want to watch a love story musical, go watch Mamma Mia. No, <laughs> that's not my favorite either. Go uh, watch West Side Story, Greece. I mean, West Side Story is better. I, I love the West Side Story. Um, we have many love story musicals, but I mean, okay. That's it. Let's talk about La La Land. <laughs> so, La La Land, directed by Damien Chazelle. It tells the romance between Sebastian, played by Ryan Gosling, a jazz pianist who wants to be a jazzist. Jazzist. <laughs> struggles. Okay, he actually struggles to just open a jazz pub of his dreams. And Mia, played by Emma Stone, who plays an emergent actress who struggles to get a role in a movie. La La Land is a clear tribute to classical music, music yes. halls, <laughs> and music. Yeah, there are well. lots of music, it's about musicals, so <laughs> musical From the always. 50s and the 60s, both in the way the songs sound and in the choreographies as well. It's like the movie is set in the dreamlike state of the characters who wants to live in a modern world, but at the same time they use music to escape from reality. Uh, well, about the relationship between Mia and Sebastian, Damien Chazelle said in an interview, they're both about the struggles of being an artist and reconciling your dreams with the need to be human. Laland is just much less angry about it. 
Chazelle is also a musician himself, and as such, he has a predilection for musicals and new events music. Who would have guessed? Yeah, instead of this, why don't you go and watch Whiplash? It's a better movie. Yeah. Yeah. Both Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling drew inspiration from their past dreams of becoming artists as a uh, base for their role. Gosling even took piano lessons for this movie. I mean, hell, dude. Hell, dude. I gotta, I gotta admit, although I don't like this movie, both Stone and Gosling has mm-hmm. done, they have done great job. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not that I don't like the acting in this movie. Mm-hmm. The acting is not my issue in this movie. That's that's sure. That's the thing that I'm sure about it. Uh, so. Um, from the beginning, Chazelle wanted the film's musical number to be filmed head to toe and performed in a single take, like those of the 30s works of Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. He also wanted the film to emulate the widescreen cinemascope look of the 50s musical, but unfortunately this technology is no longer available. And thus, it was shot in celluloid film, not dig- not digitally. Uh, with Panavision equipment in Cinemascope's 2.55 to 1 aspect ratio. La La Land was a huge success at the box office, earning a total of 446.1 million against a production budget of 30 million on Rotten Tomato. It holds an approval rating of 91%. And oh, wait, there's been a mistake. We gotta talk about Moonlight. <laughs> You just revived an old <laughs> meme, you know it. In the shadow. No, shallow. Fuck, I fucked it. Shallow and Lady Gaga sound. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's not like that. <laughs> Let's <on>. try. <laughs> what does BBC say? Really? <laughs> okay, okay Julia is doing yeah. the memes uh, with us. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Gaga. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> So, as you might have guessed, we want to talk about A Star is Born, but not the latest adaptation, but we want to review all the adaptations. And we'll try our best for sure. Yes. So, since 1937, there have been actually four different versions of A Star is Born, and every single one of them must be something different to say from the others, but however, they all share the same plot. A young woman comes to Hollywood with dreams of stardom that achieves them, only with the help of a legion man who stays uh, really behind him. Now really. the first oh, it's really behind really. Him. <laughs> the first version came out in 1937. It stars Janet Gaynor and Frederick March. Uh, it's still worth a look after all those years. This one version, directed uh, by William A. Wellman, won two Oscars in a row and got several nominations, including an unexpected Mussolini Cup at what? Yeah. When this film festival had a it Mussolini a cup? cup? It was a special cup in Sibyl during the fashion period. Eesh. Yeah, for best foreign film. Okay. Yeah. It may not compare with the following remakes, but it will surely not disappoint. And then it comes in the one from the 50s, actually from 1954. Directed by George Cocker, the 1954 version stars the almighty Judy Garland and James Mason. Garland was nominated for her performance in the Academy Award for Best Actress. Oh, she was year. great. She was totally great. And she was she dominates the screen. <laughs> and I mean literally <laughs> after filming okay, really, hear me out. After film filming was completed, Garland got away with some furniture from the set and brought them to her home and producer Jack Warner found out only when she invited him over after the premiere of the film. Ah, the irony. The irony. Now, let's get to the version uh, that came out in 1976, directed by Frank Pearson. Uh, this peculiar remake stars an unexpected Barbara Streisand. <laughs> and Chris Christopherson uh, as the main leads. Although the movie won an Oscar, uh, for best original score, it lacks a little characterization and feels much more long than the 1954 version for all bad reasons, not the good reasons. Still, you can feel that the actors tried their best to convey real emotions on stage. And then, last but not least, this all new remake follows Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Lady Gaga. 
I can't. I can't help it. Wait, sorry. Okay, it follows Lady Gaga, <laughs> all right? Follows Lady Gaga and Bradley Cupero. <laughs> On Cooper's directional debut, giving us a truly outstanding movie where everything from the original score, acting script, to the cinematography shouts Oscar worthy. Now it also gave us Gaga and Cooper shipping, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but you cannot deny the good artistic choices Cooper chose to make this film. Uh, it's a good one, got nominated a bunch of awards and won many the most important one being for the best original song, Shallow in the Shallow. Yeah, uh, that probably will stick in your mind for a while, especially after that passionate performance at the Oscars. Now, before ending this episode, let's get to some honorable mentions. Rocket Man. <laughs> no, no, you gotta say, Rocket Man! <laughs> Rocket Man! <laughs> That came out in 2019. Uh, last year. Yeah, then, yeah, <laughs> and uh, Taron Edgerton won, an, uh, won a Golden Globe for that. Yep. And then The uh, Greatest Showman that came out in 2017, again with Hugh Jackman. <laughs> yeah. And then, Mamma Mia, here, here I, I go, go again. again. It's Mama. not my thing, okay. And Hairspray that came out in 2007. So... Here you go, the second episode about musicals. I mean, I know there are lots of musicals that we haven't t uh, mentioned or talked about, or perhaps you're thinking, why we haven't talked about any animation, especially from Disney or even D Disney live actions? Well, don't you worry, citizens. Not at all. They deserve their own list and their own show, but still follow us next week as... It will be the last episode that we'll be talking about the musicals. Thanks to our group members, Said and Julio. And Julio today, he honored us by directing today's show. Hi, Thank Julia. you, man. He you says, honored Hi. us. Peace out. How cute. <laughs> and hey, don't you forget about our social where you can find us. You can find us on our Facebook page as Roma Tree Radio, on our Twitter account as Roma Tree Radio, and on Instagram as well as Roma Tree Radio. And as always, you can always listen to us on our streaming website as radio.uniromatree.in, on the TuneIn app as Roma Tree Radio, and don't forget to listen to our podcast both on our streaming website and yes. on SoundCloud, which will be released exactly. this Sunday, every exactly. Sunday. It's every Sunday. released every Sunday. Go listen to our podcast. You can improve your knowledge about Sino. That's our motto. <laughs> <laughs> Huge thank you to you all listeners for tuning in and we'll see, see you, you on, on the, the flip, flip side. side. <laughs> and we are yeah, the champions, champions my, my friend. friend. Finally. Did the postcard and was the postcard even recorded for? <laughs> Again? That would be really funny. Oh. <laughs>